One day, you're hanging out with your buddy Kian, discussing politics and philosophy, and of course, your upcoming statistics exam. And in this conversation, he decides to tell you that his IQ is 130. And in case you weren't aware, 130 is indicative of extremely high intelligence. Based on some of Kian's political opinions, you're a bit skeptical of his claim. So you decide to put him to the test. You get your hands on four IQ tests, and you have him take all four. Over the four tests, he scores an average of 128. Based on this, do you believe his claim? You probably would. If his IQ really is 130, scoring an average of 128 over four tests is quite reasonable. And the slight dip below 130 could be due to many things. We wouldn't really expect him to score an average of exactly 130 points. And this small deviation was likely due to chance. Now, let's consider a different scenario. Suppose instead that over the four tests, Kian averaged a score of 80 points. Would you believe his claim of having an IQ of 130 now? Probably not. And why is this? If his IQ really is 130, averaging a score of 80 is quite unlikely. You'd likely reject his statement that his IQ is 130. We understand that sample estimates vary around the true value, but are never really exactly equal to the true value. So the question that must be asked is, how far does the average need to drop below 130 before we think that Kian is a liar? Would we think that he's a liar if he averaged 117? In this set of videos, we'll learn the concept of a null and alternative hypothesis, how a test statistic can be used to measure the compatibility of our data with our null hypothesis, the use of a significance level and p-values or critical regions, conclusions that we can make, as well as the errors that may be made when drawing our conclusions. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and visit our website.